The Quran informs us that Muhammad's only miracle was the Quranic revelations themselves. On what basis do the Hadiths invent an abundance of other so-called miracles when the Quran itself speaks of none of them? You are of course correct, since the most surprising revelation in the Quran is the fact that it does not contain a single report of any miracle achieved by Muhammad. On the contrary, in several verses, more than 20 of them, they deny him the ability to perform any just to prove either the existence of Allah or to impress the pagans so that they may convert. All these verses assert only three things, that he was human, that he was a warner, and later as the messenger of Allah. Not even once does the Quran imply that Muhammad was a miracle worker. In fact, the Arabic word for miracles, mu'jizat or a'jubat, are not mentioned at all in the Quran. Al-An'am 6.48 We send the apostles only to give good news, mubashirina, and to warn Mundirina. Many verses of the Quran preclude the need for miracles, yet the ahadith are full of them. A serious and unacceptable contradiction, since if Muhammad did perform miracles, they would have been obviously recorded in the Quran. 6.50 Say, I tell you not that with me are the treasures of Allah, nor do I know what is hidden. A'lamu al ghayba nor do I tell you I am an angel, Malak. I but follow what is revealed to me. Al-Ra'd 13.7 And the unbelievers say, Why is not a sign sent down to him from his Lord? But thou art truly a warner, Munziru, and to every people a guide. This verse explains very clearly the functions of Muhammad. He is a warner and definitely not a miracle worker. Al-Isra 17.90 they say, we shall not believe in thee until thou cause spring to gush forth for us from the earth, or until thou have a garden of date trees and vines and cause rivers to gush forth in their midst carrying abundant water, or thou cause the sky to fall in pieces as thou sayest will happen against us, or thou bring Allah and the angels before us face to face or thou have a house adorned with gold, or thou mount a ladder right into the skies. No, we shall not even believe in thy mounting until thou send down to us a book that we could read. Say, Glory to my Lord, am I aught but a man and an apostle? What kept men back from belief when guidance came to them was nothing but this. They said, Has Allah sent a man like us to be his apostle, Rasulah? The demand by the Quraishites for miraculous proofs is understandable both from the cultural and psychological points of view. They could not accept that a mere human being, a less than equal to their nobility, could claim such superiority as Muhammad did. They needed tangible and clear proofs that Allah was on his side as he claimed. Al-Kahf 18.110 Say, I am but a man like yourselves, but the inspiration has come to me, Yuha Ilayya, that your God is one God. Muhammad denies his need to demonstrate miracles because he only gets inspiration. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 1.454 narrated by Anas bin Malik. Two of the companions of the Prophet departed from him on a dark night and were led by two lights like lamp going in front of them from Allah as a miracle, lighting the way in front of them. And when they parted, each of them was accompanied by one of these lights till he reached their respective houses. Sahih al-Bukhari 5.208, narrated by Anas bin Malik. The people of Mecca asked Allah, Apostle, to show them a miracle. So he showed them the moon split in two halves, between which they saw the Hiram Mountains. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 6.387, narrated by Ibn Mas'ud. During the life of Allah's Apostle, the moon was split into two parts. One part remained over the mountain, and the other part went beyond the mountain. On that, Allah's Apostle said, Witness this miracle. Sahih al-Bukhari 6.388, narrated by Abdullah. The moon was cleft asunder while we were in the company of the Prophet, and it became two parts. The Prophet said, Witness, witness this miracle. The story of the alleged miracle of the splitting of the moon a cosmic event of catastrophic significance 
was only observed in Arabia and only by Muhammad and his entourage in Mecca. None of the great civilizations of the time were able to observe this event, nor were they aware of it to report it. Presumably, the moon was eventually put together. These contradictory stories of alleged miracles were invented by his followers over a period of 300 years after his death to make him appear superhuman and semi-divine despite the fact that both the Quran and other ahadith firmly deny that Muhammad was able to perform any miracles. Sahih al-Bukhari 8.115 narrated by Anas bin Malik A man came to the Prophet on a Friday while the Prophet was delivering a sermon at Medina and said, There is a lack of rain, so please invoke your Lord to bless us with the rain. The Prophet looked at the sky where no cloud could be detected. Then he invoked Allah for rain. Clouds started gathering together and it rained till the Medina valleys started flowing with water. It continued raining till the next Friday. Then the man or some other man stood up while the Prophet was delivering the Friday sermon and said, We are drowned. Please invoke your Lord to withhold the rain from us. The Prophet smiled and said twice or thrice, O oh Allah, please let it rain round about us and not upon us. The clouds started dispersing over Medina to the right and to the left, and it rained round about Medina and not upon Medina. Allah showed them, the people, the miracle of his prophet and his response to his invocation. Sahih al-Bukhari 9.379 and 6.504 narrated by Abu Huraira. The prophet said, there was no prophet among the prophets, but was given miracles because of which people had security or had belief. But what I was given was the divine inspiration which Allah revealed to me. So I hope that my followers will be more numerous than those of any other prophet on the day of resurrection. This admission by Muhammad shows clearly that he was not party to any miracles, which is contrary to all the lies that were concocted about him by his followers after his death. If the above alleged miracles did occur, the ahadith then contradict all the verses of the Quran that deny Muhammad performing any miracles whatsoever. In fact, the Quran asserts that the only miracle that Muhammad needed as proof to his followers are the Quranic verses themselves. While the events of the Exodus and all the miracles that the Israelites witnessed were collective in daylight and night and beheld by the whole people, not a single alleged miraculous event in the life of Muhammad was witnessed by any other beside him, not his wife Khadija, nor Aisha, nor any of his other immediate male or female followers. Another incredible difference is the fact that the miracles of Moses were forewarned while those of Muhammad, the ayat, were afterthoughts. For example, before any of the miracles befell Egypt, Pharaoh was warned of exactly what was going to befall his country if he refused God's commands. In the case of Muhammad, no such forewarnings are mentioned. Almost every so-called miracle occurred in the dead of night without any other witnesses from his first encounter with the alleged angel Gabriel through to his second and subsequent encounters over a period of 23 years. Nor were there any witnesses to his alleged physical night flight to Jerusalem in spite of the fact that his wives denied that he left their side on this occasion. The same Muhammad that the Quran asserts were given no signs, miracles, except the words of the Quran itself, was transformed by his followers into a man performing astounding miracles in their ahadith, not one of which is based on reality or fact, and all of which are contradicted by the Quran. Believers and unbelievers, the more we investigate the Quran and hadiths, the more we uncover outright lies, deceptions, contortions of history and science, as well as mendacities that boggle the mind in their depraved indifference to logic or common sense.